these players have a lot in common, snooker backgrounds, some other similarities, but there's a couple of big differences between these two players as well. That's true, and I think the biggest difference is the fact that Karen Kaur's worst finish last year was third place, and seventh place position was Kim's best finish. So I think the fact that Karen is used to being a champion, she has won a whole bunch of tournaments here and overseas in the snooker world, and Kim has not had a major win either in snooker or here, and she's trying to prove it herself now at a very young age. It's a big deal, though. We, we talk often about learning how to win. It sounds like a strange thing, but you do have to learn how to do that. Karen Kaur has learned. Kim Shaw is in the process of learning. We're going to find out. This could be a huge stepping stone for Kim Shaw. It's already been a great week for her. We'll see how she handles it. And Karen Kaur exhaling there a deep sigh, Ava, after that break. Well, she did make it all on the break. As you can see, she let the cue ball go a little bit. She hit the one ball a bit off, and now this is what she's faced with. Cue ball on one side and the one on the other rail, and with the three ball right there, all she can do here is push out. And either way, it's going to be a bit of a tough safety shot here, whether Kim takes this or gives it back to Karen. When you have this much difference, you know, you have nine feet between the cue ball and the object ball, it's tough to hit as thin as you need to hit not to leave Karen a shot. She wants to come down here. I don't know. This is one of those, this early in the match, you may want to give this back. She would like, really have to feel confident here because she can let Karen right back in the match. I mean, into this rack. Now, she really had to clip that very, very, very thin, and uh, that was a tough shot. Foul. Foul, yes, ma'am. And that will give ball in hand to Karen Kaur. And as Ava said, that's just a very, very tough shot when it's that long to try to slice it that thin. I mean, that did not miss by more than a couple of millimeters. I'm using the English system of measurement <laughs> because both these players are from England. <laughs> from uh, Ireland and England, I should say. Well, here Karen goes. What a start here, Mitch. She's got a shot here at the one. Perfect position down for the two. And there are no major problems here. This is one to pay attention to, the six ball and the nine, the fact that the nine is right there, this is the only pocket the six ball can be made in. So that'll have a little bit of an impact on position here and getting around the table, but it shouldn't be too tough. A lot of this is a little more angle than she wanted. She's probably gonna have to go in all the way down. Can she come back out enough? Oh, perfect, Karen, that's a great shot. Great shot, and all she needs here is what we would call center table position. Anywhere in there, she can make a great shot on the four, come around here for position for the six ball. So she came up with a good shot there, good position shot there, two to the three, Mitch, and that's all it took for her to put her in the right position here. And when she is on her game, there is nobody tougher. Fabulous, fabulous year in 2001, winning every WPBA Classic Tour event taking over the number one ranking in the world from Allison Fisher, player of the year, sports person of the year that year. Huge impact on the game. Uh-oh. You saw her stay down a little bit longer on that one, Ava. I don't think she knew. The minute she hit she it, she She didn't get knew. where she needed to. I think what happened there is she played the four ball. The, you know, the pockets are a little bit larger than the actual ball, and I think she played the four ball in the wrong part of the pocket. And that, there, that's why she came up short. And she definitely wanted to be on this side of the ball to have natural position back on the seven, but this is a little more severe of a cut than she had liked. Good shot. Oh, no, she missed it. And is she going to scratch also? watch out. Also? If that keeps rolling, she's scratching too. Yeah. Just at the last second, tumbling in. See, this is very interesting to me because we saw the first semifinal match between Karen, I mean, uh, um, Kim and Helena. And Helena, who is such a routine champion, didn't feel comfortable the whole match. It was very clear that she never really felt confident and comfortable the way she normally does. And so far, the same look is on Karen's face. And Kim is about as hungry <laughs> as they watch come. Out, watch out here. Oof. Now, she's looking unhappy, and there's a reason for that, Ava. Well, she's a little bit more straight. First of all, right. I don't think she's happy with the fact that she, that she ended up attaining position the way she did because she, she misjudged something didn't hit it quite right but look how straight in she is exactly 
she wanted to have much more of an angle on that to be able to come out for the eighth ball. And now she's going to be, she knows she's going to be forced with a long shot on the eighth, and she's going to have to slam this seven, which makes it much tougher. Oh, great shot. She had enough spin on it to come on. Oh, well, she hit that so well. That was so much confidence in that stroke. One of the things we've noticed about Kim Shaw as we've watched her this week is she's in an interesting place in her progression in terms of learning nine ball. She's obviously a great Q sport player. Uh, phenomenal snooker background as we talk about with both these players. But she's still learning the game of nine ball. Absolutely. And that's interesting to watch. She gets into certain predicaments that she might not get into later on. But she's got great experience pocketing balls and she gets herself out of some situations by the nature of her stroke and her technique. And right. we've watched it. Let's see if she can make this cut shot. It would be for a two rack lead. There it is, like it's no problem. Like it is no problem. Kim Shaw looking very much in control here early in East Peoria and she has the break. The Q Tech Q's Midwest Classic is brought to you by Q Tech Q's. Serious Q's for serious players by the American Pool Players Association, the world's largest pool league. And by Brunswick Billiards, since 1845, the standard of superior craftsmanship preferred by experts around the world. We're here in East Peoria, Illinois at the Paradise Hotel Casino for the QTQ's Midwest Classic and you're getting a good look at part of the great playing equipment for this event, the beautiful Gibson table by Brunswick Billiards. Players also using Centennial Balls by Brunswick. There's 860 Simonis cloth on that Gibson table as we looked at Karen Kaur with a worried look on her face and rightfully so because though ranked 10th in the world to Kaur's number two, Kim Shaw is the one who's looking confident right now. And I definitely think she has learned a little bit about the break, Ava. She seems to be hitting it a little more solidly than before. Absolutely. And if you notice, the one ball, she has found where to make the one ball on the side. Both breaks, she Push. has made the, the one ball go straight into the side pocket. Steve. Look at her Push. right there. The three Push. ball went right in the corner, followed by the four, which I think, I believe, got kicked in there. But getting that break down where you make the one in the corner can make you deadly and you can keep control of your turn in this alternate break format. And here, obviously, we see the problem Same. down here. The two, eight, and nine are bunched together. She's going to have to push out. And this is one of those where pushing out is not easy. If she gets over where she's looking at right now in this area, Karen may even have a shot at the two. That's the worst thing you want. You definitely want, don't want her to have a shot at it. So you may actually want to push out to a place where you have to kick safe. I think that's what she's going to do. She's going to just go up. I doubt Karen... Karen's probably going to have to rail first here. I mentioned before Ireland and England. Karen Core originally from Ballymoney in Northern Ireland. Kim Shaw from Basingstoke in England. It's all British Isles match. It is. And one thing that Karen has learned from playing nine ball over here is where's the nine? <laughs> Let's look at that first. In this particular situation, the seven is blocking the corner pocket, I think, for the nine ball to go in. But you always want to check on it, make sure that that can't go. And then she looks at it and she says, you know what? Very polite. This is a tough, tough hit. I mean, it's tough safety. Because it w it, however she hits this two ball, she would have to absolutely hit it perfectly not to leave Karen a shot because the two will stop probably off the eight. And that's something I just you couldn't really see it from the angle, but Kim Shaw came over, took a little extra time to look at it, and then almost ran back because of that shot clock. But I like that. Now she didn't I don't think she got away with what she wanted to there, but it No, says, it was difficult. The two was gonna stay there. But it says something to me about her presence of mind at the table to take the extra time looking at the shot and then rush to get back. True. She's just, it's a lot of, of presence of mind is what I guess I'm trying to say. And Karen Kaur now has a shot and a tough, cut, jacked-up shot on the two. Looks like she's playing a safe here. She's just going to stick the cue ball behind the nine. Great shot. It was a little bit too thin of a cut to be able to make it. But she got away with a great safety. And here we'll see. Okay, Kim can't go one rail into the two here. From the side rail she had a perfect safety instead she's going to have to go down to the end rail to hit the two 
I like a two rail shot here. I don't like hitting these one rail, but because it's just easier to feel the two. It's easier to judge which side of the two ball to hit. Yeah, she's going two rails here. She wants to hit the left side of the two. Oh boy, she wanted to hit the left side of the two, not that far left, <laughs> but that way she could split the two and the cue ball up and use the blockers, the five and the six in the middle of the table. So it was a method to her madness there. She just hit it a little bit too thin. Big Not turn of events do. in this rack, though, for Karen Core right here. And Karen obviously made the correct decision by giving the shot back to Kim, but it wasn't like Kim had much decision to make in pushing out. There wasn't too many places to push out. You either leave Karen a shot, or you had to leave yourself snookered and then try to do something. So it's not you an easy to, situation. You hate to have a break where you make three balls on the break, and then you're forced to push out, and you bet. forced to have a tough push out, too. <laughs> you bet. It's the nature of this game, though, and Karen Core, down by two racks in a race to seven to see who'll move into the finals, is now exactly where she wants to be. If she can pick up this rack in which Kim Shaw had the break, Karen will have the break in the next rack and may be able to even it up. And it's the kind of seesaw battles that we've started seeing out here on tour at this level, this caliber of play. I'm just so amazed that, you know, the fact that there are two snooker players here again playing in the semifinals, and the scary part is there's a snooker player winning the wings in the finals. Well, I'm going out <laughs> on a limb here to say that one of these three ex-snooker players is going to win. A Chances snooker player are. will win the QTQ's Midwest Classic. It's just so amazing, and I tell you what, the most amazing thing about, for everybody at home watching this, the best part about learning, you know, the, the, the thing about the snooker players is not necessarily just their style but the fact that they are so incredibly consistent their basics their fundamentals are so perfect that they make the least amount of mistakes there's nothing out here that they're doing that the top pool players can't do but they are just doing it and just not making the unforced errors solid stroke there by Karen Core. a punctuation mark to her first back here in Peoria, and she has the break. Getting a good look at the big break rack by Brunswick Billiards, and that familiar rack of nine beautiful centennial balls, also by Brunswick. Crowd into it, Kim Shaw into it, and obviously Karen Core into it. Karen at the table, down by a rack, one, two to Kim Shaw. Everybody's enjoying it here. It's been a great week at the Paradise Hotel Casino. A lot of pool-loving fans in the Chicagoland area. We're a few hours away from Chicago. They've traveled from near and far to see the best players in the world. Karen with the break, and where does that one wind up? Well, the biggest difference right now between Karen and Kim's break is that Kim's been making the one ball in the side pocket. Karen keeps going back up here, and she's left with no shot. She's going to have to start drawing the cue ball up to get to be able to get position on the one because he keeps landing up there so again same thing as last last game last rack they're going to have to start out even with a really tough safety here or push out looks like she can see enough of it to play a safe but it's not an easy situation Mitch because she, yeah. she cannot see the extension. left side of the one ball Karen takes her extension at last year's Midwest Classic, Karen Core beat Helena Tornfeld in the first semifinal 7-4 and then lost to Allison Fisher in a stunning match. Allison winning that match 7 to nothing, which does not happen often. And here you here see Karen, Karen decided to go ahead and just play the push out because the safety, she did not like the safety. It was way too tough, too risky. So having the push shot option, she decided to go for that. And as you can see too, she tied up this three ball a little bit at the same time, just in case Kim wins this battle, she's really gonna have to fight to get on that three ball. You get in here, you should be okay. But right now, all Kim's concerned with is playing a safety, and snookering yes, please. Karen, and she doesn't like it either. Look at this. So this is interesting though, the last, is. the two breaks that Karen's had, she broke the balls, wound up pushing out and right. getting it back. Now see, I don't know, this shot I would have I, I would have taken. It looks like she can hit on the left on the right side of the one with some left spin and hide the cue ball and kind of stick it there behind the five and send the one ball straight down. May not. Oh, she gonna get there behind the Oh great shot. Look at the speed of that shot. 
Man, you got to have some confidence wow. to play that kind of speed. That goes another inch. Kim has a perfect shot on the one ball in the side pocket. A little farther down in the corner, and now instead she's going to have to kick at it. We'll see. She could even make this match if she can get deep enough. It's not what she's going to be trying for, but just playing a safety here, getting the cue ball across to the other side of the table. Look at this. Look at Ciao. this. She had the right idea. She wanted to come in at the side rail and have the cue ball drift back, possibly even hiding behind the balls at the end rail. So it was, it was not a bad shot, just misjudged by a hair. The results have been the same. I lied a little bit before when I said that uh, she, twice she had pushed out and twice gotten it back. The second rack, Kim actually scratched after a push out by Karen. But the results have been the same. Getting it back or not, Karen Core with ball in hand again. Let's see if she can get rack number four. In the second rack, Kim Shaw wound up winning that rack. And Karen does not want that to happen again. And here with ball in hand, starting out with ball in hand on the one, she gave herself the opportunity to get perfect position down here on the three, where the seven did not come into play as much as it could have. She wanted to get a little deeper than that and have the opposite angle. Here she's going to have to flirt with actually hitting the seven, which makes position a little bit tougher on the five. Looks like she's going to draw it off the seven a little bit here. Good shot, but a tester coming up here. Yeah. Look where that five is. Beauty with this is you don't have to fight for position here. You just have to really, with center ball, just cut this five ball in, make sure you make it. Cross table and over for the six. You got, a, shot making. you got a good look at a great stroke there. Now, that cue ball is pretty close to the rail. Yeah, and worse than that, it's not just close to the rail, but look where the six is. is a straight-in shot. Mm. Now, if she had some angle on this, it wouldn't be great, but it would be much better. Look at this. She wanted to be right in here in this area, and she could have drift down and come down for the seven. Now, she's going to have to roll up and take a really tough, long cut shot on the seven. Watch this. I know she's a snooker player, and I know she's used to a big table and everything else, but this is one of those where you do. You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like you actually shook up here. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and you have to worry about controlling that cue ball. Really pay attention now. She's going to hit this with some draw and come out. Shows a lot of confidence on Karen's part, not just rolling this in, but to hit it with low ball. Oh, beautiful. Watch this. Perfect position the side on the correct side of the eighth even. Watch this. Wow. Beautiful. We've seen both players. Kim Shaw has done this too, where you take the tougher shot and have confidence in your ability. We talked about it a little earlier. She's been able to do it, and there Karen Core makes her own statement. Wants it to stop right there. <laughs> Good speed. I think Karen Kaur is kind of saying, okay, you people here, you may be a little enthralled with Kim Shaw. You haven't seen her that much before, but do not forget, I am the number two ranked player in the world. I have been number one in the world, and I want that again. She's going to do everything she can to move on and meet Allison Fisher in the finals. Everybody having a good time here in Peoria. Okay, so we know who this guy's favorite is, <laughs> Kim Shaw. And there's a little bit of some action going on down here in the crowd. They've got their favorites, everybody rooting hard. And they're really enjoying the action. They had a great week here at the Paradise Hotel Casino. Kim Shaw at the table, ranked 10th in the world in only a year and a half, has moved up to that position, top 10. And that in and of itself is an amazing accomplishment, but she is definitely not satisfied. Tied at two racks apiece in a race to seven. Six goes in the corner. Let's see where the cue ball and the wow. one wind up. I think she'll take that. Cue ball's completely straight in on the one. One goes past the eight, no problem. Get down in this area. Give yourself a bit of an angle on the two. She wants to draw down and pretty much get in the middle of the table here, Mitchell. And that way she can make the two come across for the three ball. 
And it's laying really good right now. And her biggest problem, and she's already looking at it, is where's that four? Four down here by the seven is going to create a bit of a problem. The five, the nine, everything is kind of blocking the path where, where she wants to be to play position. So she's got a tricky shot coming up here on the four, and uh, three to the four, and she knows it. So interesting to watch these two ex snooker players, so similar in technique. That little hesitation in the mm -hmm. back of the stroke, and you're definitely going to see it here. This is a very delicate shot. She's going to make the three ball, hit the cue ball into the rail, come across here to the center diamond on the rail, and back in and try to go between the seven and the nine with perfect speed. Watch it, watch it, too firm. Hit the nine, she'll be okay. There you go. <laughs> That'll work. And she did let that stroke out. You got a she good did. look at it. She was heading towards disaster there had it not hit the nine, but this was, that was absolutely perfect. Now come up straight up for the five. Preferably pretty much straight in on the five ball so she can follow in. Oh boy, she's not liking that. It's amazing how a quote-unquote simple out can be so difficult. It's all what you make of it because now she's going to have to work hard to get the cue ball down to the seven. She's going to have to make the shot tougher by putting a ton of a reverse spin. A lot of right-hand English makes the shot tougher, makes position tougher. And she, I mean, she hit that as well as you could and still left herself perfect angle on the seven to get up for the eight. It's like I said, when you get out of line, when you have a little bit position, a position that's not quite what you wanted, then you can recover like that. Exactly. I mean, sometimes it catches up with you. We've seen that how many times? But she is doing what she has to do and now drifting down for the eight. Look how good her speed is. A little bit of an control. angle. It's beautiful. This is where she's got the advantage over Karen also because Kim uh, came out of the loser side. So she has already played a match on this particular table and this particular cloth with the television lights and all the tables have been playing great but they all play a little bit differently and she has one match under the belt which Karen does not so that will make a difference in uh, controlling the speed of the cue ball the logistics of doing these television matches for your viewing pleasure sometimes set things up that way and you got a good look right down the barrel at that nine ball it gives Kim Shaw one rack lead. Karen Core will have a chance to answer with the break. We've had a fantastic week here in East Peoria, the Paradise Hotel Casino. Got everything you could ask for. Great gaming, a lot of fun, fabulous accommodations, terrific people. You'll enjoy it at the Paradise Hotel Casino. Karen Core at the table finds herself down a rack to Kim Shaw. Two, three, race to seven. There is Kim. She's got to be feeling good after breaking and running out in rack number five. We're in rack six. One of these two players will move on and meet Allison Fisher, waiting undefeated to this point in the finals. And this time for Karen, a lot better result of the break. She will not have to push out as she has had to two previous breaks she's had. Again, one ball did not go in the side pocket, but look where it ended up perfect, right in front of the pocket. All she has to do now is come over here to this side. Simple shot at the two there. If she can get the good position, there's no reason to come back on this side of the table because then she could flirt with getting behind the three. So be just a little bit of left spin and come on the other side. Great shot. And as you look at overhead here, this being the key shot, getting correct position on the five ball, somewhere in this area where she could just float down to get position on the six. Both of these players very good with the bridge, given their snooker background. And Ava said something before that I found interesting. Pool players not familiar with snooker, don't, you don't have to think that just because these players have great technique, it's only from playing snooker. It's just that they focus on the fundamentals and have, and that includes the bridge and other fundamentals and basics of the game that you can establish too just by practicing just by working it's hard. repetition that's exactly. one thing that you really taught from the beginning you know snooker has been a big sport for many many years over in uh, in the British Isles and the thing is in pool now you can go to a billiard room and you can find 
um, teachers and a, and a house pro and that type of thing, somebody that can actually teach you the perfect fundamentals from the get-go. But so many of the pool players nowadays are self-taught, have been watching, emulating somebody else, and are a little bit more inconsistent in their stance, in their approach, and everything else. And I think that is the consistency, the fact that these guys have learned the way to play. Mm -hmm. These women have gotten lessons from a very young age and, and how to do everything perfectly every single time, the same way every single time. That's why they're so consistent. You're getting a good look at some beautiful, beautiful cue ball control by Karen Core in this rack. And this is what great champions do. When the player before them gets up, breaks, and runs out, you get up and make your own statement. You answer the same way. And that's what Karen has done here. And that, to me, is what's so great about the alternate break format is that you do get a chance at the table every other rack, even if your opponent does what they're supposed to do, which is to break and run out. And... I just think it's, it's the greatest format, and it really encourages the close matches. And as you can see here, Karen just needs to make this nine to tie it up three to three, and it's, uh, so far it's an unbelievable match. Okay. Back and forth we go in East Peoria, Illinois, the Q-Tech Q's Midwest Classic, and we're all tied up. You get a look at that beautiful Gibson table by Brunswick Billiards. You also see Kim Shaw move into position to break in rack number seven. We're tied at three apiece, and so far it has been all that it has been billed to be. Kim Shaw with the first two racks, Karen Core with the next two, and then a rack apiece gets us to this point. And another good break. Five goes in the corner, and look where that one is right there, Ava. Two well, on the other end. <laughs> I think that was the first time she did not make uh -huh. the one ball on the side. And it was heading for not a very good situation there on the end rail, but the four ball came and knocked it into position right there in front of the pocket. But with the two ball being down here by the six, she's got a lot of work to do. She's going to have to slide, make sure she does not make contact with the seven into the rail and clear across again. She just barely hit it, but look at this. Unbelievable. Perfect. You heard... Perfect. That was as good an example of speed on a stroke. You could really hear her drive through that ball. That was great. And that was about as close That's to great. the seven as you had to go to get the cue ball all the way down to get a shot at this two. That's another sign right there of somebody who's got incredible confidence in their stroke. Definitely. Just letting it out, letting it go. This was tough position on the two, but she handled it beautifully. You know, we talk about the... <laughs> <laughs> we talk about the advantage that Karen has having the experience, been a champion numerous times, the fact that um, Kim has not won a major title, but there's a lot to be said for hunger, and I think she, Kim is just ready to do something here. She's had the game now for a long time. She's consistently done better and better and better last year, this year, and um, I think she is ready to make a statement right now. Here well, she's in a bit of a trouble, though. Sorry, Miss. She is in a little bit of trouble. The fact that she has that she's going to have to really, really either draw this cue ball or, I mean, to get through those two balls. I'm not quite sure. It's tough to see the angle she has here. How she's going to get on the other side of the table. That's why it was tough because there was no way to do it. I think. She just gave it a rip. And you've got the time Oof. clock ahead, you know, against you as well. So. Big deal. Now she's got this on the four. And with those balls that wide open, this is going to be a very, very critical shot. And look where that nine ball is. You know, she's looking at nine ball a little bit here. There could be a bank shot safety at the same time. Or she could hit a thin and have the cue ball come down. Anytime the nine's there and you're in a tough, I mean, the best thing she could do here is slide the cue ball behind the seven. But she went kind of for the double she, shot. I think she, she was, was too hungry on that nine, yeah. She knew she had a double shot trying to cut the four ball in and at the same time have the cue ball go down and, hit the, and then possibly hit the nine ball in. And again, I think the time, uh, the time clock, clock yep. yeah, was a little bit against her there because she um, came up with an idea and just went with it. You can get greedy too, you know. You hey, see, when that nine is that close nine to a pocket, <laughs> just, sometimes you just need to fire at it. Well, earlier in this rack, we'll see where that winds up as Karen watched it all the way across the table. 
I was going to say that I was starting to get the feeling that this match may come down to one mistake by one of these two players, as close as this has been. Absolutely. And could it be? We don't know if maybe that was a little bit of what was going on there. We'll see if she's going to pay for it. There's only four balls left on this table for Karen Kaur. Yeah, this is a must, must do for Karen right now. Look out, look out. Oh, it stopped just in time. This is a must run out for Karen. And that was a big shot for her to come up for the seven the way she did. Now all she has to do is come out and play the, she can play the eight ball on the side, in the corner, it doesn't really matter, whatever she feels comfortable to either let her stroke out or just cinch the seven and draw it back a little bit. The nine being by the corner pocket, she should have no problems getting out here. There's the seven. You know, we talk a lot about Allison Fisher's dominance in the game, and when Karen Poor came over here from Ireland, she made her own statement. 11 of the last 21 events on the WPBA Classic Tour have been won by Karen Poor, including four majors, two nationals, two BCA Opens. A very, very powerful player. And that could be the breakthrough that she has been waiting for in this match. 4-3 now against Kim Shaw and Karen Poor has a chance to go up by two racks. She'll have a break. ESPN goes spanning the globe this September to bring you the world of sports. The UEFA Champions League returns. You're watching the Q-Tech Q's Midwest Classic. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in the match. Kim Shaw at the table. She will try to put a, a stop to Karen Kaur, who now has taken the last three racks and leads 5-3 in the race to seven. Karen doing what she does, which is get into her own place think about the game let kim do what she's going to do and then get to the table as that five goes watch out for the so five. does whitey uh -oh. right into it man wow is that big she is down five games to three she finally gets to the table again after karen not making a mistake for a long time and look at this she does i mean she hit the ball fairly that, solid that but just the, draws right back in there that's it yeah that's a very typical either in a side pocket on the other side of the table or back in that corner very common <laughs> scratch wow so ball in hand for Karen Kaur and again Mitch the balls are pretty wide open I mean it takes it's gonna have to pay attention here obviously from the four ball up here to the six it's gonna be she's gonna need to have the correct angle and then from the seven being that close to the side pocket get down to the eight it's another tough situation she's, uh, Karen's going to be faced with, so it's not an automatic out by any means. She's really going to have to pay attention here. But this is where Karen, you know, I've played her enough times to where I know this is when she, Karen smells blood. She knows she's ahead. She's got a hold of the match, and now a mistake on Kim. This, you cannot make a mistake against Karen at this point. And I was just thinking, this uh, it's sort of, at 3-3, three, three, it was a very tight match, but in the last couple racks, slowly and, and very subtly, it started to feel like Karen's match, and it's almost like she gets to a certain point where it's this inexorable march toward the final and meeting Alice. Exactly. There's some kind of pull between these players, and I totally believe that Kim Shaw will be a part of that. Uh, great talent and learning all the time, and if she loses to Karen in this match, this will be a fabulous learning experience for her. Every time you play on TV, every time you finish this high in an event, it teaches you something. She's going to be hungrier next time, even, as you said, she'll go home and work on certain things. Absolutely. Um, very, very focused player. It's not over yet, though. You know what? It's not. And this is an interesting angle. You know, it's, it's a matter of millimeters here, but it's very close to being the kind of shot here where when she follows this ball coming down, she wants to get down here. If she hits this point right here, she'll get snookered behind the nine. It's going to be very close. She needs the cue ball to hit the rail very quickly here. Oh, she just barely. Did you see what happened there? She hit the uh -huh. point, and because she hit the point, the cue ball took a different path and went all the way down and, and left herself a tester. And you saw, you saw her eyes kind of go skyward because she was going, oh, man. And as we said, at this point in the match, we keep feeling like she's doing what she's doing, but it's not over yet. Not by any means, but being ahead five games to three, it's much easier than it would be in that earlier, tighter stages of the match but here she's got a really tough she may even go ahead and play a safety it looks like she's going to clip it on the left hand side and try to play a safe 
instead of trying to super, super think, ah, oh, she did. Watch the cue ball. Watch out. Watch out. How's Watch that? out. She well, doesn't like it. I mean, it's walking <laughs> no. toward the rail. Another tester. No angle. Another tester. Look at this, what a severe cut this is, and she's going to have to watch out. It's difficult to tell, but if she cuts this nine ball in, look out for the scratch in the side pocket. She's looking at the angle right now, making sure she may go ahead and cut it in this side. I don't know, but the last place she wants to be on is frozen on the rail right here with the cue ball. And I think this is a good time to take her <laughs> extension because she there's... <laughs> I'm just thinking, it's, as soon as you start talking about kind of a march toward the final, right. <laughs> you think there's only a few balls left. Yeah, funny Incredible. things happening sure with is. the greatest players in the world. And here, this is a, a must make because the whole mental battle will change here if she does not get out here. Wow. And she is very, wow. very upset. She goes back to that chair now. That could be very costly there. Well, here's a, here's a gut check for Kim Shaw also. The long shot down table, but as it's you have easy. often pointed out, at least she has a shot. And if she makes this, her right. whole mental attitude is going to change. Karen will have the break in the next rack, though. Let's see. Why she took... Oh, oh, oh. See the hesitation? I was going to say, stroke. did that seem like a lot more hesitation at the back? Just to get us all a little bit more on the edge of our seats, but that's what she's done. Kim Shaw Everybody gets the nine four. back to within so one rack. Nine. Karen Core has the break. Left on the edge of her seat, as are many people here at the Paradise Hotel Casino. In East Peoria, Illinois, Kim Shaw must win the next three racks against Karen Kaur, or Karen will move into the finals against Allison Fisher. 4-6 and a race to seven. Kim Shaw with the break. One and the six and the eight. Ooh. Well, talk about a <laughs> must-do here. And living up to it. Three balls on the break. Doesn't seem like she hits them hard enough for three balls to go in. But she's getting such good power now. Look at this. Another look, look at, at it. Corner ball goes. One ball goes in the side. Then the eight comes all the way down here. And she could get dangerous here. The balls are open. Big tester here on the two. Long, tough shot. Nope. Oh, my. Oh, boy, Kim. That could have been all she wrote right there. She really needed to make that. She had perfect position on the three. The four is right by the other side. The five's right there. All she had to worry about was how to get down in this area to the seven. And now instead, Karen pretty much has that situation. And uh, I like Karen from here. She <laughs> just... Do you? <laughs> she's just so confident. She's going to get her extension. All the snooker players have that little extension in the back of their queue to make it a little bit longer so they can reach. Six balls left on the table. After a beautiful break, Kim Shaw unable to take advantage. And that was a tough shot on the two, but she would love to have that one over again, trust me. On the other hand, Karen Kaur is in a position to do what she really, really wants to do, and that's move into the finals and resume what has become, I think, one of the most amazing, intense rivalries in all of sports. It's incredible. That she and Allison Fisher have. Here's a little statistic for those of you who love the game of nine ball. In the last 22 events that the women have played in, Karen Kaur and Allison Fisher have won 20 of them, one of those two players. And you want to talk about back and forth. It's pretty, it, it's amazing. It's I mean, unbelievable. Even though I compete against these players, I'm excited watching it. It is just so amazing to watch two players, especially in a game like this, where there's there are 64 players in each event and a lot of great, great players uh, from all over the world. Everybody is here. And for two players to make it through that, you, any idea how incredibly consistent these two players have to be? It's just incredible. Five down to the seven is really the only work she has left. And there it is. She wants it to stop. Against the rail. All right, a little she's drama left. Still. I think she's okay. 
Well, she's not perfect, so she kind of rolled her eyes a little bit. But you know what, Karen, for the win, you, I think you should be able to handle this. I know it's not where you wanted to be, Karen, but she wanted to be almost straight in here to have a little angle to drift up. The fact that she's on the rail, she's going to have to jack up a little bit more. And Kim is in the chair, hoping that that could have something to do with the outcome of the shot. Answer, no. A nice move at it, and a deep breath by Karen Core. One ball left to move into the finals. And there it is. What a match. A very, very strong showing to most of it by Kim Shaw. And trust me when I say that we will see her again. Karen Core moves on. And now it's time for our Super Shot of the Match, brought to you by QTEC Q. This is it. This is the one Karen Core needed in this match against a very tough Kim Shaw. The final nine ball leaning, extended out over the table. Here's the final nine ball. Beautiful. Center cut. Karen Core moves into the finals against Allison Fisher, Kim Shaw, great tournament for her. We've had a fabulous time. We hope you'll join us for the finals. Karen and Allison for Ava Lawrence. I'm Mitch Lawrence. And yeah, see you soon. Accommodation provided by the Paradise Hotel Casino.